Hello, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of Unfiltered. I am here in studio with uh, two uh, very wonderful ladies, um, the uh, incomparable Lindsay B and also the incomparable Kaya Panthier. How's it going, ladies? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to have a great show today. All of our viewers, thank you for joining us. You know how we do here on Unfiltered. Like, share, call on others to join. We're gonna have a very powerful conversation. I think everybody should hear what we're gonna talk about today. So encourage others to join, send them the link, share, and leave your comments if you're so compelled to. Uh, but if you're inspired, come on at the end, ask some questions, engage in the dialogue. Um, Kaya, uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, I know that uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, some brief things that are happening in the community. Um, and then uh, we're going to move into a show talking with uh, Lindsay uh, about a lot of very important things. And... Um, and taking questions from there. So um, without much ado, uh, I'm going to, most of our viewers are familiar with Kaya. Kaya is our co-host on the show. She does Community Vibes. You know, she does uh, our Instagram management. So um, she's a little bit familiar. Kaya, how is your day going? What's happening in Halifax? Well, thank you so much for having me. I always love being on here. Um, Right now in Halifax, uh, as you may or may not know, uh, we are back on lockdown. Um, I don't know if you can really call it that. It was supposed to be a two-week circuit breaker. 
to try and bring our cases back down, which um, didn't happen, <laughs> um, which, you know, was disappointing for a lot of people, but I think, you know, it's the responsible thing to be doing. So everyone's inside right now. Our, um, our bubbles are at zero, so you can't see anyone. Um, stores are closed. Um, and a big thing that I've heard here, or a big complaint that I've heard uh, voiced is that small businesses are really suffering right now. Um, and so I think that's something I would just like to like say right off of the bat is that especially if you're living somewhere that's in lockdown, reach out to, you know, small business owners that you know, um, ask how you can support them. That's a big thing. Uh, restaurants, if there are restaurants that you love, local restaurants, get takeout. Um, so that's like, you know, that's big on everyone's mind right now. I know it's easy to go to Costco and Walmart and stuff like that, but we definitely all have to be doing our part. Um, and then, you know, another concern right now that I've been hearing is waste. Um, people have questions about how wasteful, you know, we're being during this pandemic. I know that it's necessary a lot of the time, but um, how are we dealing with, you know, where are we, once we're done using swabs for tests, where are they going? Um, syringes for vaccines. So I've been hearing a lot of talk like that. Um, it's very interesting. I haven't done a lot of research into that, but those are the two big uh, talking points I've been hearing here. Very nice. What about uh, vaccine and the quest to reach herd immunity? Uh, how's that shaping up? I know that uh, we've ramped up activity on that front, and now they've lowered the age so that uh, people from, I think it's 20, 25 and up can get, can get the vaccine now in our province. So what are you hearing about that? Um, for the most part, I think that people are actually really excited. Um, we've had, you know, obviously, like, we've had a few anti-vaccine, anti-mask rallies here. So that's a big question that people are having in their, uh, you know, in their minds right now is what are the ethics around vaccines? But I think for the most part, um, people are really excited. I hear a lot of talk of people just wanting to go out and get theirs. I do know a few people. Um, I don't know. You may or may not know that AstraZeneca, we've kind of discontinued administering the AstraZeneca vaccines here. Um, and that was mostly because people were having a lot of vaccine hesitancy around the, the AstraZeneca vaccine um, because there was uh, you know, the small chance of blood clotting and the province was worried about bringing in too many vaccines and then having them be wasted. Because obviously we know that now like vaccines are in high demand and it would be a really big shame to waste, um, waste vaccines when people need and want them. So there's a lot of people who got their first shot of AstraZeneca. I'm having a hard time pronouncing that. Um, <laughs> it's all of us, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a tongue twister. Um, and now they're waiting to see um, if they can get a second shot of one of the other vaccines. Um, and I, I'm sure, I think I've heard that there are quite a few trials going on about that. So uh, that'll be interesting to see, but I know that that's causing some concern for some people. Mm, mm. That's excellent. Uh, I, I actually have my, my vaccine uh, booked for next week. So I'm, I'm looking forward oh. to that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of what's happening in here. I know Lindsay's all the way out west. So uh, you might want to weigh in on this, given that, uh, you know, you're also part of this uh, uh, pandemic conversation uh, before we head out into uh, our discussion proper. What's happening out in, uh, in Alberta? I think it's a lot of the same things. Like people are just looking for options as to like how we can move through this as quickly as possible and get back to whatever the new normal is going to be. Um, but I know that we're kind of at a place right now where, yeah, like small businesses are suffering like crazy. A lot of people that were handling the solitude of pandemic and like lockdowns before that were handling it really well are kind of getting to their breaking point right now. And we're seeing a lot of mental health issues arising. And I think that that's a conversation that needs to be had and needs to be prominent um, in discussion because it really is starting to affect people and starting to weigh on people. And we as humans want to know like the ABCs of what we can do 
to get through something. And unfortunately with something like this, there is no ABCs. It's just kind of like trial and error and see what happens as we go. And so um, having compassion for each other is huge. If you're not a vaxxer, don't shame people who are getting vaccines. If you, if you like, don't like the vaccines, you know, just have compassion for each other. Understand that we're all doing the best that we can and making decisions from whatever stance that we can and trying to make as educated, you know, guesses as possible. Um, but really being compassionate for ourselves and being compassionate for others, I think is, is really, really necessary at this point in time. I think that's a very, very important point and spoken, uh, you know, from, from, from a true uh, medical intuitive, you know, we have to be really compassionate because I think that, you know, sometimes we, we um, approach these things from our mind and sensibilities and, and forget about the compassion part. And then it just creates a lot of, um, you know, conflict. So th that's really, really important. Uh, Kaya, is there any other things uh, that uh, you'd like to share regarding uh, what's happening in the community, how they're taking it? Um, I know that they've extended the lockdown till June uh, mm. and schools are out for the rest of the year. So, you know, how, how, are, you, how are people taking it? How are your peers taking it? You know, you're, you're sort of transitioning uh, into, you know, university uh, in the fall. So what are you thinking? Well, I think that I just want to like, first of all, before I answer that, just say that like, I completely agree with Lindsay on the mental health um, front that like, it's been really very difficult for a lot of people. And I especially have been hearing, um, I mean, I'm only around, I tend to be around younger people um, or talking to younger people. Um, and so I've been hearing that it's hitting especially hard because we're not going back to school. Um, we're not going to be uh, among each other again. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's the responsible thing to be doing. Um, but it's hard. Um, a lot of people feel like all of these landmarks um, that, you know, when you're young, you kind of anticipate it, whether or not you care about graduation or prom or any of those things, you kind of just anticipated them happening. They were things that you, you know, you knew or you thought were going to happen, just kind of not happening. Uh, it can make you feel very, <laughs> very strange, you know? Um, it's just a reminder of how things can change so quickly. Um, and I think that a lot of younger people are really yearning for or wanting that like ability to celebrate with their peers. Um, and so, you know, hopefully when it becomes safe to do that, people will be able to like, to see each other and one or two other people and really mark those landmarks. Um, I know that I even feel a little bit weird because it feels like um, very anticlimactic, uh, but you know. Well, uh, that, that's very well put. And, you know, uh, hopefully as we go through our conversation today and with people listening to uh, what uh, Lindsay has to share with us, in terms of her practice and, and how she came about all of that, hopefully uh, some of what we talk about today will be able to help people uh, dealing with some of the difficulties that this pandemic has brought upon us all. And also hopefully, um, you know, we are moving towards that light at the end of the tunnel um, with the vaccines, with the uh, rapid vaccinations. And, and frankly, uh, you know, with, with a lot of people being eager to, to, to be vaccinated so that we could achieve this herd immunity, uh, whatever that is, uh, that is being talked about. So uh, I'm really excited for this conversation. I'm really excited that you are on. I'm excited that Lindsay's on. And I'm excited for all of our viewers who are tuning in. As you tune in and tune out, leave your questions, leave your comments, uh, encourage others to come on. And we're going to be uh, having a very, very powerful conversation and impactful as well. Um, and Kaya, please, uh, as we engage, jump in if you have questions and, you know, if you uh, have comments, because uh, I'm sure that this is going to be riveting. Oh, now to the uh, lady of the hour, uh, Lindsay. So... Uh, <laughs> So I want to tell our audience this uh, just to start 
um, Lindsay is a medical intuitive and it's taken me a little bit to try to understand, you know, I never heard of that until I met Lindsay. <laughs> uh, but, but now I know and I sort of understand um, what her practice is because, you know, I was very fortunate that she did an assessment on me um, in terms of her practice and we worked through some of the processes. And I gotta tell you, uh, it's, it's fascinating but even better than fascinating, it is very, very useful and helpful to anybody who wants to live a life that is filled with positive wellness, well-being, and connecting to all the different uh, parts of your being that, that, that exist. So uh, I feel very, very grateful, and I feel very appreciative for you coming on to share with us, Lindsay. So uh, I wanna start uh, just for our viewers, talk to us a little bit about uh, being a medical intuitive. What is that? Uh, how, do you, how do you become a medical intuitive? And, and what does that involve? Sure, yeah. So medical intuition falls under the umbrella of energy healing. Um, and it is just a really holistic approach to your being. Um, it's the understanding that whatever has manifested on a physical level stems from an imbalance within our energy system. And so if we envision ourselves as these three parts, the mind, the body, and the soul, the mind has a language of interpretation, how we perceive the world, how we go through it, the narrative that plays in our head. Um, the language of the body is done through sensation. And so the emotions that we feel, the senses that we have, what we can see, hear, smell, touch, taste. Um, and then the language of the soul is our ability to really lean into surrender. Um, the idea that we all came here with this life blueprint, a purpose that we're supposed to fulfill. And hopefully by the end of the day, we all leave this world a little bit better than what we came into it as. Um, and so medical intuition is really like finding the root cause behind injury, illness, ailments, disease, and dysfunction within the body. Um, and that stems into our daily lives. Like if you're out meeting resistance day to day and not living a life that's fulfilling and happy, um, that too stems from an imbalance within the energy. And a lot of times it's like, we've lost that internal compass. We've strayed too far from what our life purpose is or our life plan is. And so um, really getting back to that and utilizing these different aspects of ourselves to encompass what it means to be whole, healthy human beings. Mm, mm. And so, uh, so how long have you been, uh, you know, carrying on this practice? And uh, what, what sort of brought you to that point? Because I believe there's a story before. Uh, <laughs> how did you get there? Yeah, so as far as the intuition goes, that's something that we are all born with. So um, we all have the ability to kind of do what I do. It's just some of us have worked at it a little bit harder than others. It's like going to the gym. Like you can't just go in there and expect to like lift the most weight in the world. You have to work up to it. And it's the same thing using your intuitive muscle is we have been driven in a society that trains us that intellect is what is praised. You're praised for high scores. You're praised for following the rules. You're praised for fitting in. Um, and that all drives that mind-based functioning. And so um, I guess what brought me to this was A, my own health issues. I've always been one that kind of like questions the why behind things. Mm. Um, I recognize from a very young age that the, specifically the Western medical model focuses on the symptoms. And when we focus on the symptoms, we're not actually getting to the root cause of the issue. So you might deal with that symptom, but it's going to surface as something else in a different way, in a different facet, in a different form um, that eventually we're going to have to deal with. And so my own health issues, my own lifestyle changes, you know, getting out of relationships and into new relationships and recognizing the same patterns that were happening. And so it was a moment to really like step back and take a look at myself and like, okay, there's gotta be something more to this that I'm missing. Um, and so I kind of went on this self-discovery journey and it started with reading a couple different books. And I came across a book by um, Carolyn Miss, who is a very well-known medical intuitive. And within the first chapter, I was like, this is it. This is what I need to be like looking into. And so 
Um, I started looking for a medical intuitive in Calgary and I found none. <laughs> and, but I did come across um, a program that trained people. And so there is training for this. It is something that we are, that I am currently striving towards educating and advocating for. Um, to really bring this as an integrative method with your, with the medical model. Mm. And so, you know, working with doctors and nurses and physiotherapists and chiropractors and all of these different people that work with the physical body to understand that there's another component to this, which is like that soul aspect and learning how to create healthy dialogue in the mind. And so um, my journey from here, I guess, was just life experience. <laughs> like it really did bring me here. Um, and it's a journey that I never thought that I would find myself on. Like 10 years ago, I was a project manager for a commercial construction company building strip malls and schools, and those types of things. Um, and then I just got on this journey and it was like, oh my goodness, like my soul has been craving this and I haven't looked back. And so it's been, um, a long process of really refining my skill and learning how to help others in a way that's tangible, that they can actually take action, you know? And like, we did the assessment on you the other day and there is one page that's just devoted to taking intentional action to bring yourself back into balance of mind, body and soul. Um, and that's where healing and health really resides. And honestly, this conversation couldn't have come at a better time because when it comes to the pandemic and health issues and people having these deep, deep concerns on their shoulders about like, what can I do for myself? Well, honestly, the best thing that you can do is come back into alignment and come back into balance and allow your immunity to naturally enhance itself by simply creating these pathways within our system that allow for healing to take place. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, very, very well said. Uh, now, uh, I guess, uh, Kaya, do you have a question? Oh, well, I'm just like, this is like a whole new, <laughs> realm of, like, I guess it makes so much sense to me that, you know, the way that we think can affect and the way that we navigate the world can affect our physical um, selves a lot. I'm just really interested in, you know, hearing more about it, I guess. Um, I'm sure I'll have more questions. All right. All right. Uh, perfect. I, I just want to make sure that, you know, yeah. you're in. Um, so uh, let me start by this because uh, I'm really fascinated and intrigued. Um, and especially because I had an assessment done on me. So I have, I would say, maybe a little bit depth, uh, just understanding uh, uh, that from my own uh, perspective. But, you know, it, it's funny that you talk about, you know, trying to bring this other component to uh, all these other practitioners who are doing all these things with the physical body. And I know that out there we have a lot of pagans and we have a lot of people who are religious and we have a lot of people who are spiritual. And, you know, sometimes people don't, you know, understand the difference between. But as a Christian, uh, somebody who, who was raised in Christian tradition, one of the things that I note that the Bible says, there's a very famous quote that we always say is that, you know, we, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but we fight against principalities and powers, you know, rulers of this world of darkness. So, so that verse basically tells us that there is the physical world, but there's also the spiritual world. And sometimes you might be dealing with things in the physical that are not necessarily controlled from the physical, but it's controlled from the spiritual. And so you have to consciously tackle things that you come across, both in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm. So, um, what do you make of, uh, I mean, that tells, that backs up a lot of what you've just said for me. And so it, it makes concrete for me what you are saying. So what do you make of, uh, uh, of, of spirituality? How does spirituality play into what you do? Mm -hmm. um, so regardless of what your belief system is, I think we all have this understanding that there's a higher power governing us um, and leading the way. And whether that's something, whatever you want to call your God, whatever you want to universe source, God, 
Allah, whatever it is, um, it all comes back to this fundamental piece that like we are connected to something bigger than ourselves. Mm. And when we allow that voice to speak through us, all it knows is unconditional love. All it knows is that everything is happening exactly as it should happen. There's no right or wrong when it comes to the eyes of God. It's just like, we are all God's people. We are all God's children. We are all deserving of love and compassion and understanding. And it is, it's the powers that be. It's the systems that we were raised in. It's all of these constructs that we are filled with from essentially the moment we're born that shift us away from that and tell us, you shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't have your unique talents. You shouldn't go and be an innovator. You shouldn't go and, you know, expand on anything. It's fit into this box, fit into what we want and be a good member of society in the way that we deem a good member of society. Um, and so really like this work is about understanding those constructs. And yes, there are constructs that have been put in place that are meant for our protection, that are meant to help us, that are meant to guide us. But at the same time, there's a lot of those constructs that are really debilitating for our spirit that really do um, close off that natural light that we all have within us that's meant to emit in a very unique way. Um, and so <clears throat> a lot of the work that we do is stripping away these constructs that aren't serving us anymore, that land in our system as limiting beliefs that stop us from speaking our minds, speaking our opinions, um, taking action in specific ways. And so one of the ways that I really like to think about this is that we're just these really intelligent computer systems. And if you think about cell phones now and emails, everything wants to auto text for you. And so <laughs> bringing this back to like a very logical perspective of things, we as humans only use about 10% of our brains on any given day. And so that's like 90% of space that's just like untapped. We don't really know about, we don't really understand. And the subconscious programming that we have is actually what dictates most of our movements throughout the day. Mm. And so what we wanna do is understand where this subconscious programming came from. So up until you're about eight years old, you're just in this realm of theta waves. And so you're kind of in this hypnotic state where you just absorb everything as being true. And so as our parents are raising us um, or whoever our immediate caregivers are, we just kind of adopt their coping mechanisms as our own. And so as we grow up, it's like we are just built off of these foundational blocks of other people's traumas. Um, that they have protected themselves against and that sets into us. And so if you think about like the auto texting concept, if the first eight years of our lives are our systems, our minds, our bodies and our spirits just kind of like downloading information into it, then by the time we hit that eight year old mark, if we go out into the world and we come up across something like let's use spiders, for example, or bugs. Like most kids aren't afraid of bugs. It's only, they only become afraid of bugs once they see their parents react to that bug and mm -hmm. then they freak out. And so now every time they see a bug, they freak out <laughs> when really, if we were to strip that construct, then it's like, okay, now we just go about and we see a bug and we, we move on with it. Like it's not a big deal. And so a lot of this work is really about stripping apart those constructs that society has put on us, that our, our immediate family has put on us, that um, whoever, the powers that be, have put on us and really stripping those away to come back to actually listen to our soul, to listen to that voice of God, of consciousness that comes through us, that's actually directing us to be like, here's your purpose. We want you to live the best life ever. You know, like if you bring it back to God's will, God's will is that all of his people live freely, abundantly, and happily. Mm -hmm. And that means whatever encompasses that. So it's whatever makes you happy, whatever makes Kaya happy. It is God's will that you receive all of that in your life. And anything that creates resistance against that is one of those constructs, is one of those limiting beliefs that has actually dimmed that light within us. And so removing those constructs so that we can move freely in this world and live a life of, of abundance and happiness. Wow. 
Uh, so so let's let's peel some of those layers, but but that was very informative. Uh, now uh, I'm just gonna say this because I see that Kaya may want to say something, but you did an exercise with me uh, just to underpin what you're saying. You did an exercise with me, and at the end of it, I could I could feel so I, I could taste, I could uh, smell, I could like my senses were more heightened. You, you know, and you ask me what what can you what what do you feel what do you sense what do you smell what do you, you know, so um, that is really profound because um, lately, you know, it, I I never felt any sense of you know like uh, you go about life you wake up in the morning you have your routines you know you're going about things right unless it's something that fits within the construct of your daily routine like you gotta eat this quinoa, then you smell the quinoa, right? <laughs> you got to eat this sandwich. But I felt like, and I could, I, could, I could feel my senses, my sensibilities around taste being expanded. Like I could sense and taste things that I wasn't, you know, I didn't have them before me. I just, I was just attuned to that. And that made, that convinced me that there was another level of depth that I could go. So explain to us a little bit about, you know, uh, what, how you get somebody there, how you get somebody to that place where they are beginning to understand the energies that are coming to them and that are around them and being able to, you know, allow themselves to uh, open up this sensation. You talked about sensation, open mm -hmm. themselves up to sense and be in tune with all of this. Mm -hmm. So back to thinking of us as being these three parts, mind, body, and soul. If you can envision like a little pie chart in front of you, um, imagine that this circle is 100%. In order to operate equally in perfect balance with those three parts, each part needs to be operating at 33.3%. Okay, so then you get like that nice little ideal circle with your three aspects of it. But what happens is, um, like we said, society comes in, we're praised for our intellect, we're praised for all of these things, fear starts to set in. And so all of a sudden, we're giving more power to our mind. <clears throat> and so if you envision this pie chart, and the mind now takes up, let's say 70% of the pie chart, that's only leaving 30% for the mind or for the body and the soul to be attuned to. And so most new age spiritualism at this point will tell you quiet the mind. The ego is bad. We don't want to hear from the mind, but that's not true. The mind is a part of us and it's a very important part of us that keeps us safe. It helps us logically rationalize things um, and really helps us create goals and aspirations and take intentional action towards things. And so rather than quieting the mind, what we want to do is actually take intentional action towards activating the other aspects of ourselves that have been eclipsed. And so we want to create activities that make ourselves feel safe in that space of surrender. And so um, surrendering could be something like taking a different road to work or walking down a different pathway. It's training your body that even though something looks different, we are still safe to take that action. We're still safe to move forward in that place. Um, and then ways to activate the senses of the body are to play on those things The you know, what we can smell, what we can taste, what we can touch, what we can hear, what we can see. And for many of us, we do get in those routines where we just don't pay attention to those things at all anymore. You know, we, we drink our coffee without enjoying coffee we eat our meals and just like shovel food into our face and then go on to the next thing or you're eating while you're working or you're eating while you're doing this and you're not actually present in that moment and so um the easiest way to quiet the mind is to naturally and organically activate the body and activate the soul and so um the exercise that i ran through with you on the assessment was this thing called heart therapy and so heart therapy is really just attuning to that inner like lie detector that we all have within us. And what it is, is simply attuning to the sensations that take place within the body. And so you can get people to just like close their eyes and like kind of take those few deep grounding breaths. And you're just going to ask yourself, like, 
heart say yes, heart say yes, heart say yes. And you're going to attune to that sensation. And for most people, you're going to get this like expansive, free feeling. Like you're just so happy. You've lost 10 pounds, like that just elated feeling. Whereas if you say heart, say no, heart, say no, heart, say no. All of a sudden you feel your energy like constrict. It's like you go like this and you get into a little shell and you dim your light. And that's what happens to so many of us. And so if I were to give like one exercise for people, wake up every single morning and do that with yourselves and just check in with the sensation that it arises within you. And so now when you attune to that, you get so familiar with like what heart says yes feels like versus what heart says no feels like, then it's like, okay, do I want this job? Heart say yes, heart say no. Do I want to eat this food? Heart say yes, heart say no. Um, is this vaccine going to be good for me? Heart say yes, heart say no. It can be used in like literally every aspect of our lives because this is our guiding light. This is that like source talking through us being like, yes, you're in alignment. Yes, this is in alignment with your system versus no, it's not in alignment. And so when it comes to balancing the mind, body and soul, if we come up to something where it's like, okay, a job offer has presented itself mind is like, take that. It's stable. It's secure. It's a raise. You're going to get good benefits, yada, 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 all of these things. But for some reason, when you check in with your soul and that heart say yes, heart say no, it's a heart say no. And so like, how willing are we to be like, oh, I'm going to trust this internal compass because I could get into that situation and my bosses might not be open to hearing what I have to say. I might not have freedom of speech within that. I not, might not be able to ask questions. It might not actually like advance myself in a different way. And so really learning to attune to those senses within us to guide us through life as to like, this feels right for us and this feels wrong for us um, and really breaking those things down. And so the easiest way to come back into balance is really to start playing with your senses, like go and stand outside and just like close your eyes and see if you can like hear the birds and hear the wind in the trees and hear all of these different things. And like, what can you smell? Can you smell the flowers? Can you smell like the rain coming before it rains? All of these types of things. And, and like you said, like the minute that you start to attune to that, all of a sudden the world kind of shifts a little bit and you have this different lens that you're looking through where it's like, now I am attuning to what things feel like and what things really taste like. And when you think about like the overall theme of this with that pie chart, now all of a sudden your mind is going back closer to that 33% and the other areas are expanding. And now we are finding that optimal interconnectivity again, where like health and healing and wellness can take place. Well, Kaya, you can go, but you just, you ended on the, on the note that I was going to ask you about opt, optimal interconnectivity and you just summed it up there, but Kaya, you can go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say that earlier when you were talking um, about like emotional responses and reactions to things and how those be inherited from, you know, the people who raise us or the people who are around us um, that really like hit home for me um, because I'm thinking a lot about what is biological, what is natural, and then what is like given to us because of like, you know, the influence that other people have on our lives or the influence that language um, mm -hmm. or just society as a whole has on our lives. Um, you know, we grow up thinking certain reactions and emotions are biological and they're hardwired into us. And then we realize that other cultures have whole other emotions and languages around emotion and reaction that are just like we don't feel or we don't have words to describe them um even in like the english language um or in other languages so i just wanted to say that that was like really interesting to hear that kind of idea re uh reintroduced um but i also just had a question about self-doubt and how that plays into this idea of like intuition because i know a lot of people myself included feel very strong like connection to this idea of like intuition, like this feeling of knowing or having a gut feeling, knowing what's right for you. But then there's all of this anxiety and self-doubt around making those choices, you know? Um, and so how does someone go about unlearning that? Um, I know you gave some examples, but yeah. yeah. Totally. 
And that's where it's, it's a slow process. Like if you think that you have spent your entire life protecting yourself and building these constructs and these limiting beliefs, it's not going to just like, it can change overnight, but for most of us, it takes really intentional work. Um, and what I like to always suggest is for people to create small wins for themselves. And so um, if you are going to the grocery store, start like manifesting the spot that you want before you get to the grocery store. Like, oh, I'm going to get like really close to the door. It's going to be in a good spot. You know, if you're going to the beach, you're like, this is the part of the beach that I want to sit on. And I just don't want people around me and start creating really small wins for yourself. Because what we have to do, it's almost like when you have a toddler running around and you don't want them touching the stove, like you have to go like, don't touch that. It's going to be hot. Don't touch that. It's going to be hot. Don't touch that. It's going to be hot. Um, and we kind of have to do the same with ourselves. Like it's okay to do that it's okay to go there. It's okay to trust this. And we really have to like build that confidence up within ourselves. And so by creating like small wins for yourself, um, we train the mind that fear isn't a bad thing. Like we've been so trained that like fear is this awful, awful thing. But really what fear is, is just notifying us that something is going to change that like we're looking at something different or we're putting ourselves in a vulnerable place. But then once you like get out there and you share yourself or you put yourself out there and you step beyond that fear, it's like the most elated feeling that you can possibly have. And so specifically when it comes to like fear and self-doubt, one of those things that I have people do is like do creative writing and like write out a paragraph of exactly how good it feels when you've accomplished something, when you've crossed over that fear threshold, when you've um, when you've done something that's like out of the normal and just makes you feel elated inside, like write that out and really allow yourself to embody how good it feels as humans. We do this thing where it's like, if something good happens to us, we just kind of like brush it over. Whereas if something bad happens, we have to fix that. And that comes back down to like how we were raised and like our academics and stuff. If somebody is doing something that's good, we don't have to give more attention to it. If somebody is doing something that's bad or doing something incorrectly, we're spending more time with it. We're being more intentional to correct that action. But it's like the sliding scale. You can't have one without the other. And so if we avoid, you know, feeling bad, we also avoid feeling good. And so what it is, it's really about like reminding ourselves what it feels like to feel good, to feel free, to feel liberated, to feel expansive. And the more that we can focus on those things, we're actually creating new neurological pathways within our brain. So that when we come up to a fear point, we're not focusing so much on the fear or the self-doubt. We're focusing on how good does it feel when we get across this? How expansive do we feel when we pass that threshold? And so it's really just about training the mind. And the easiest way to train the mind is to give it small wins. Mm. Um, and so really like creating a space for yourself that it's like, okay, if I know that I do these activities really, really good. Um, I'm going to like implement those a little bit more often because it's training myself that it's okay to feel this way. It's okay to feel good. It's okay to feel, to step beyond fear. Um, and it's really about retraining that brain but it takes patience and it takes dedication and the understanding that when you are going through this process there are going to be moments where it is super uncomfortable and you're going to get into that vulnerable place and you're going to be like what have I just done like I'm so scared and I want to run and I want to hide and what we want to do is in those moments moments where you want to run and hide is call in one of these experiences that make you feel super good. And so like, even right now, like if I were to just say, like, I want you both to call in like the energy of depression, it's pretty easy to call that in. We can all like get ourselves to a place like that. And it's like, okay, now I want you to call in the energy of like your, your favorite moment, like the greatest thing that has ever happened to you. And it's just as easy, like all of a sudden you feel this physiological shift take place within you. That's like, oh, I'm light, I'm expansive, I'm free. And so remembering that we have this tool in our toolbox at all times that if I change what I'm thinking about, 
everything about me changes. And so if we're in this place of fear, if we're in this place of sadness, if we're in this place of grief, we also have within that same toolbox, the ability to call in, you know, even an emotion that feels just a little bit lighter than that. Like if somebody's depressed and in their bed and can't get out, it's really hard to just be like, Hey, be happy. And just like feel happy. That might not be where they're at, but if you can get to a place of grief, to a place of um, confusion, that's even a step higher from that emotion. And so we slowly work our way up there. Um, but it's about really creating a toolbox of intentional things that you can implement that when you do feel those more uncomfortable or unfavorable feelings, um, to have something that you can call in that does make you feel good. Um, and just like they say, like emotion is energy in motion. And so if we are feeling this <laughs> thing of like extreme emotion, the best thing that you can do is just move, like get up and do jumping jacks, go for a walk, get outside, wear bare feet and just like touch bare feet on concrete or on the grass and just allow yourself to attune to something different. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. That was like, I think we always have this idea too that kind of training ourselves to um, to be more positive or to you know to kind of get away from a lot of the like negative things in our lives that it's really hard. So it's nice it's nice to hear that it's not not that hard. Um, yeah, <laughs> it can feel hard at times, but like everything is temporary. And so if we can always just kind of like have that underlying um, understanding that even when I'm feeling like not good and when I'm feeling really constrictive, um, that it is just temporary. And there are things that we can do to even help us like move one step higher on that scale of emotions. So very powerful. Um, now, so you've talked about this optimal uh, interconnectivity and, and all these things that, that lead to that point. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh the and just understanding the energies because that 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 is a whole thing in itself understanding the energies because you talk about calling up these energies but but how do people get to how do you get to recognize energies identify energies um and and, and sense it because to call up you know I, I imagine to call up a certain you know energy you you have to understand it or could something go wrong uh, you know could you could you be trying to call up one type of energy and then you know you call up something else like walk us through some of these processes and how people can do this better mm -hmm. so there are a whole bunch of different energies out there and kind of depending on you know your cultural backgrounds how energy is described or talked about is different kind of wherever you go. Um, the energy that I work with is just source energy. And so mm. when I tap into energy, I tap into like God's energy. Like there is nothing but love here in this space. Um, and that's really kind of like my guiding light to this is that when I am tapped into like that type of source energy, lower energies and lower frequencies can't really interfere in that space. And so it's kind of like thinking about any, any energy wave, electro energy waves, magnetic energy waves, um, mm -hmm. you know, any of those things, microwaves, radio waves, all of these things are on these different frequencies. And so, um, just aligning yourself with this idea that like I'm tapping in and I'm tapping into like my higher self and my highest purpose. And I'm tapping into like God's energy. Um, when you're in that space for me, anyways, there's not anything that can come and like penetrate into that. Anything that does to me is typically an understanding that like there's a lower vibration that you are carrying within you, which is those self doubts, those fears, those types of things that are actually interfering with it. Um, but as far as like the energy that I work with, it's, it's just unconditional love. It's meant to like help you be your highest self. It's meant to help you heal. It's meant to, um, it's, it's really, really powerful. Mm. Um, and so 
familiarizing yourself with that. It's the same thing as that heart therapy, heart say yes and heart say no. When you're in that heart say yes space, it doesn't matter if somebody comes and cuts you off in their car. It doesn't matter if your food doesn't taste the way it was supposed to taste or like they messed up your order or your boss yells at you. When you're in that like heightened space, it's just like, yeah, these things will happen, but it's not going to bring me down. And I think most of us have experienced like those days where something really, really great has happened to us. And it's like stuff that would normally bug us on like Tuesday isn't going to bother us today just because we're in this like space of just being so open and expansive and happy. And so that's what I always like tell people is like, just continue to like work on channeling that energy of that heart say yes, like, how does this feel? And it really does come back down to like attuning to your own senses <clears throat> and spending intentional time, like getting to know what your system feels like. Like we all have this different, we're all different bodies. We're all different beings. And so what, what is my resonance frequency is going to be different than both of yours. And so mm -hmm. it's really getting accustomed to like what I feel like, what does happy really feel like for me? What does angry really feel like for me? Like when we talk about being anxious, we so quickly just like slap an anxiety thing on it. But like, what does anxiety really feel like? Anxiety for me feels like not being able to take a full breath, um, having tightness in my chest, kind of like rolling my shoulders forward and not being fully present. Um, those are what makes me say, oh, I'm anxious. And so it's the same thing. Like, are we able to sit there and be like, what does happiness feel like for me? What does joy feel like for me? What does liberation feel like for me? You know, most of us, especially like our age groups, we want freedom. We just yes. want freedom. That's right. <laughs> and so like, what does freedom feel like for you? And when this comes, I know like we're going to be talking about like the law of attraction and stuff. Yes, so I'm yes, kind of yes. roll into this. Yes. Um, <laughs> What we want to do is like, you know, one of the um, examples that we used the other day was talking about how the internet has an algorithm. And so when you're on Instagram and you're on Facebook and you're liking these posts and you're screenshotting them and you're adding them to your stories in the background, what's taking place on the technology side is like, oh, we're just going to start catering everything to what they're liking and to what they're talking about and what they're posting about. And so now all of a sudden, like your world within your cell phone becomes so unique to you that it's like, if you were to look at somebody else's Instagram or somebody else's Facebook, you'd be like, whoa, I don't, I don't see any of what you are seeing. That's right. <laughs> and like life does the same thing. And so if we are constantly sitting there and focusing on a space of things that we don't have. And so if you're sitting there and you're like fresh out of school and you're in your twenties and you're like. I can't get a boyfriend or I don't have like a long lasting relationship. I'm surrounded by debt. My job's not coming the way it wants. Think about what we're adding into the algorithm. Like if we're sitting there double tapping on, I don't have a job. I don't have a healthy relationship. I don't have a support system. I don't have enough money in my bank account. If that's what we're liking, then that's what the universe is responding to. That's the algorithm that we are creating. And so when we talk about channeling these energies within us, if we can stay in a place, even if we look out and we're like, eh, my life isn't exactly what I want it to be looking like today. If we can get to a place of like, but I love waking up and like having the morning to just like focus on myself. I really love being able to walk down to the ocean and put my feet in the water. I really love being able to take my dog for a walk. I really love this about myself there's a big energy change in those two types of worlds and so now all of a sudden we're creating this algorithm in the universe that is responding to abundance that is responding to possibility that is responding to um, self-appreciation and self-worth and all of these things and so if we start thinking that the universe caters events to us and experiences to us based on the energy that we are emitting outwardly now all of a sudden that logical mind is going to be way more intentional about the words that we're using, the language that we speak, the ways that we talk about ourselves, the way that we view things. 
um, it becomes way more intentional. And so we really want to talk, like start thinking, being an observer of the algorithm that you are creating in your life. If you're constantly dating the same person over and over and over, and it's constantly failing, if you're constantly getting into a job that doesn't respect work-life balance, um, look at yourself first and foremost and be like, what part of me is in alignment with this? Because law of attraction's at play. And so there's a reason why these experiences have been called into you. If you're dating the person that doesn't make time for you or doesn't really listen to you or doesn't appreciate you, how intentional are you being with yourself and appreciating yourself, making time for yourself, listening to yourself, understanding yourself? If you're, in a, if you're in work and your office is one that doesn't believe in work-life balance, they just want you to work, 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 look at yourself and see if you have this construct built into your mind that says, if I work harder, I will receive more praise. If I do a better job, I'll be validated. Because now all of a sudden we're going to be putting ourselves into situations where we have to work harder, where we have to show up and overexert ourselves because that's what we deem as being validated. And so how are we creating these algorithms in our, in our own lives? And so what this does is it really allows you to become the observer of your life, to get that bird's eye view and see, okay, if these are the experiences that I'm having, what am I doing in my own thought process in my own spare time in my own life that's actually calling in these experiences does that make mm. sense very very powerfully explained um you know all i was thinking about this as you said as you were talking uh, i think therefore i am uh, <laughs> um very interesting that you, you you bring us to this place of uh, before we get to laws of attraction and you've hit that in, in, in parts of this. I wanted to go through uh, intuitive guidance because it mm -hmm. seems to me that for you to be able to get from just being exposed to this knowledge uh, and then understanding it and really implementing it in your life, you need guidance, right, to, to sort of move through this. And, you know, I've submitted myself to, 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 to that um, with you, but tell us how, talk to us a little bit about intuitive guidance, and then also tell our viewers perhaps um, some of the ways in which, um, you know, they can tap into your practice, they can reach you and things like that. Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I believe that when we tap into this space of intuition, it kind of taps into collective consciousness, collective intelligence. And so it is my understanding or my belief, which, you know, we all have our different things, but it is my belief that if I came here and this was my purpose on this world, like on this earth, I have already God made no mistakes in this and God gave me all of the tools or made it accessible to have all of the tools that I will need to fulfill that purpose and so as you go through life and it's like you have this relationship and you have this job and you have this setback and you have this barrier all of these things are actually like unlocking different aspects of ourselves that tap into what we need to fulfill our purpose and so, like we said, like in the relationship, if it's like our goal is to be like full of self-love and full of self-compassion, every single time that we are challenged in our self-love or our self-worth is actually like building us up to this space of like overcoming those self-worth issues. Mm. And so when it comes to intuitive guidance, like I said, we all have intuition within us. And I think this is one thing that we have been undersold our entire lives. We are all extremely intuitive beings. And we look, when we look at like the laws of the universe, like you look at how animals communicate and trees communicate and, you know, the ecosystems communicate. It's not through language. It's through vibrations. It's through sounds. It's through pheromones. It's through all of these different aspects. And we as human beings are no different. We know that when you walk into a room and people have been just arguing that your body tenses up and you're like, uh, did I just walk into something <laughs> that I wasn't supposed to walk into? 
like that's your intuition talking to you that is that is an intuitive aspect of us and it's gauged by our nervous system and so really learning once again it comes back to this like know thyself as deeply as you possibly can know what it feels like when your nervous system has engaged into fight or flight mode when it engages into fight or flight mode that's your instant response like your instant response should be like pause and like regulate regulate my system take those few deep breaths allow parasympathetic nervous system to come back into play that rest and digest phase where you're calm and collected so many of us it's been like conflict happens and the way we've been taught is like fix the conflict. <laughs> but what most people, like if you listen to a lot of like really successful business people, they're like, if somebody presents me with a problem and they give me an hour to fix that problem, 45 minutes of that hour should be spent just identifying the problem. Whereas most people spend the entire hour just fixing the problem, but they haven't really identified like what caused the problem, where's the root of it, how do we prevent this from happening in the future? And so 45 minutes of that time should actually be spent like, where did this come from? What are the deeper layers to this? And it's the same thing with our intuition. We really want to understand like how to listen to first and foremost, our own intuitive guidance. And that can be done. It happens all the time. Like people say it's, you know, woo woo or whatever that we have signs around us all the time. But like, if you are driving down, if you drive the same route to work every single day, there and back, there and back and there and back. But one day a sign stands out to you with a specific word on it. So many of us just like drive past that and don't think anything of it. They're like, oh, that word stood out today. And then they just keep going. Whereas your intuition was like, that was us telling you something. <laughs> like, just <laughs> listen. And so like they happen all the time. If you are walking past people and you hear a word out of a conversation that stands out or you're talking to somebody and one sentence just like resonates with your soul, that's your intuition. That is something that's guiding you. There's a lesson there. There's something, there's a puzzle piece there that's supposed to fit into all of this. And so first and foremost, build your own intuition by like playing with those senses. One of my favorite things to do is to get people to bite into a lemon. And so like even thinking about biting into a lemon, like you know that your mouth is going to start to water. You're going to get like that pinch point in your ears. Your like whole system's going to like kind of shrink up a bit. And so if you can attune yourself to that, then all of a sudden, like you start to attune in all of these areas. It's like, I'm walking down the street and I am more like, I am more aware of the signs that are taking place. I'm more aware of the things that are sticking out as guidance from my intuition. And, you know, this comes back to us being mind-based functioners. We have been raised to just like, listen to what the mind says. And that's just truth as it is. When really we are like these multifaceted beings. And so another example that I really like to use um, is cooking in a kitchen. If you just go into a kitchen and you start throwing all these spices in, but you don't know what the spices taste like, you are going to end up with a disgusting meal. So what you want to <laughs> do is like get used to like what these different flavors are. Like what does turmeric taste like? What does peppers taste like? What does salt taste like? What does garlic taste like? You know, all of these different things so that when you're cooking, you're like, oh, I need a pinch of this and a lot of this and a dab of this. And it's the same with intuition. If we sit there and we can play with like, what do you think? Like, let me just focus on my ears for a little while. Like every single day for this week, I'm going to like go outside and be intentional about listening to my world. And then the next week you're like, I'm going to be intentional about like smelling things. And so it's like every time that you're doing something, like whatever it's around you, grab it and just like smell it and get your yourself used to attuning back to like that sense and then all of a sudden now you start to see that your daily life becomes like this kitchen where it's like now we're not just going out into the world and being like what can I see and how can I interpret it but I'm going out into the world and being like how does this world feel to me like do I feel good here do I feel good in this space um, what stands out to me? And like, that's really the foundation to building up your intuition is just learning how to listen to your entire being 
um, mm. as being a factor in this. And then the next layer is like, when you want to start really diving into this and like taking it to that next level, you can source out people that are going to help with your intuition. And once again, like when you are looking at working with somebody, it's really important that that person resonates with your frequency. And so once again, sit there and like, if by chance somebody happens to watch this live and they're like, Ooh, like that girl, like I really resonate with that Lindsay girl, like sit there for a second and be like, is this a heart say yes? Like, am I ready to like work with this person? And if it's a no, then just continue on your journey for a little bit and see what else pops up. Um, but if it's a yes, then like reach out and take that intentional action to like take that next step. And working with someone like me, um, like we said, I did an assessment on you. And so that's usually a prerequisite for people that come to work with me, uh, just so that we can get a really solid understanding of what's going on in the system of that unique individual. And then we really guide you. And so we can offer specific um, activities or specific tools that are catered to your individual needs that are going to help you work out. It's the same as like going to the gym. If you want to lose weight, bulk up, get a bigger butt, get a flatter stomach, whatever it is, you're going to want a trainer that's going to attune to your needs and your desires and help you work on those specific goals. And it's the same with somebody who does spiritual growth or personal development, you want somebody that's going to meet you where you're at. That's going to understand your boundaries and your comfort levels, because we don't want to do more damage. We don't want to traumatize people by opening up their traumas. And so mm. understand that you're working with somebody that respects you, um, that has an understanding or appreciation for the culture that you come from and isn't going to try and like pigeonhole you into a different realm that you're not comfortable with or not aligned with. And so it really is about finding that person that you're in alignment with and then being ready and open to do the work. And I think, you know, when it comes to intuition and, and personal development, it's really about um, finding somebody that can hold space for you and that you can be vulnerable with and that you can open yourself up to and that they are not going to meet you with criticism or judgment or blame or shame, that they view you through like the eyes of God, that they view you with love and are here to truly support you and help you on your journey moving forward. Very powerful. So uh, before we go on to the next uh, uh, question there, how can people reach you? How can people find Lindsay? Yeah. <laughs> So I do have a website. I know we'll throw it out here following the show or in the comments for the show, but it's perceptive-evolution.com. Um, and that's exactly what we do. We evolve people's perceptions. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm also on Instagram, same thing, perceptive evolution. And I'm a pretty casual person when it comes to this stuff. So you can send me an email, you can send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. And um, we usually just set up like an initial conversation. So uh, you get about a 30 minute consultation where we really dive into like, what are your goals? What are, what's your plan? What are you looking for assistance in? And like, here's my list of tools in my toolbox. And we really create, um, an individualized plan as to how we can move forward as a team. Mm, mm. Yeah. The quest towards wholeness. I guess all of this, uh, you know, from all of what you're talking about, it's about being those whole individuals, you know, who are whole in body and in spirit. Um, and just drawing from one of the things you said, you know, uh, like, like somebody who works out at a gym, you know, most times you work out at the gym, you're working out the physical body. I know we can go philosophical and talk about how exercise also has something to add to the spiritual realm. But, but uh, you say a lot of times we focus on the physical and, you know, we neglect whether it's the intuitive, uh, you know, and that uh, spiritual realm. Walk us through laws of attraction. How, how, how does that tie feed into, you know, um, the optimal interconnectivity, you know, uh, whether it's tapping into subliminal space, uh, intuitive guidance, how does this all tie together with the laws of attraction? Yeah, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> um, essentially, like, it all comes back down to this algorithm. And so 
if we are bringing back this like pie chart in front of us, if 75% of our time is spent in this mind-based functioning, then that's the algorithm that we're calling in. We're calling in experiences that are either going to challenge our intellect or are going to praise us based on our intellect. But as we know, like the more that we focus on the intellectual aspect, the more it kind of dims that light within us. It's like, it stops our creative process. It stops our ability to just like be these intuitive beings that are out just kind of like floating around. Um, children are so in attunement with their like wholeness. That's why kids like say whatever they want to say and just do whatever <laughs> they're going to do. And like, you know, like as adults, we kind of look at kids sometimes and we're like, oh, I wish I had like the confidence that a kid has. Like they just like sing and dance and play and they don't care who's watching them. And like, that's something that we can take from kids is like, let's really start to embody our whole selves. Like, let's start to play again. Let's start to dance. Let's start to like feel how vibrant this life can be. And that's what plays into this law of attraction. It's like, we really want, like I said, it's God's will that we live the most fulfilled, abundant life that we can possibly imagine. And if we really like let go of our constructs, like the plan that God has for us is way bigger than the plan that we have for ourselves because he sees everything, you know, it's like, it's just there. And so the more that we, bring ourselves back to optimal, um, interconnectivity, the more that we have that freedom to be like, yeah, I view myself the way that God views me. I am worthy of having money in my bank account. I am worthy of not being stressed out every single day. I am worthy of like playing and laughing. I am worthy of posting that picture and wearing that bikini and doing that thing without like having the fear of having negative comments come in and like shrink me back down. I am worthy of being my soul's truest and fullest expression. And when we step into that, like even saying that, like, I feel my body expand. Like I feel my energy just like, (laughs) like blow out there. And like, when it comes to the grander image of things if we are all walking around like this like these whole happy healthy human beings the ripple of impact that that has on other people is phenomenal like if you see somebody like dancing and playing in a park all you want to do is dance and play in the park and so like by us being our truest fullest versions of ourselves we also invite others to do the same And so that's where like love and compassion all of a sudden, like just spreads like the pandemic did. Like if you just like walked out and gave somebody else permission to be their fullest self without judgment, without criticism, without anything, like, could you imagine how much love this world would experience? Like no matter what bad things are going on, we can still just like hold space for each other and allow each other to like show up as we are. And so when it comes to like creating this algorithm and creating health and wellness within ourselves, it really just comes back to, we are designed to be self-sustaining ecosystems. We are designed to know what our body needs. Our bodies are phenomenal, phenomenal things. Like even in a stress response, the minute that you feel danger or fear surrounding you, there is chemicals that are released in your body like you go into fight or flight mode. So like your limbs don't get as much um, oxygen flow, as much blood flow as they should. Everything comes into these vital organs that are going to make you survive. And so when it comes to like disease and dysfunction, if you're thinking that most of us are walking around in this fight or flight state, meaning that like our bodies are just in stress, of course, we are going to call in dysfunction and disease to our bodies. Like it just, it can't operate. It's like us going into burnout. If you're constantly overexerting yourself, there's going to be a point in time where you're like, I need to sleep for 24 hours and like, don't bother me. And our bodies are doing the same things, except they don't have the ability to be like, Hey, we're just going to shut down for a while here. (laughs) (laughs) And so it's really about like creating a space within us that allows, um, for flow, for energy flow, for 
flow of nutrients, for flow of blood, for flow of oxygen, all of these things so that our systems can be happy and healthy. And then when we think about exerting that out into the external world, well, now all of a sudden we're that expansive being where we are holding space for other people to show up as their most authentic selves. And so then it creates this algorithm, this law of attraction that's like, hey, if I constantly feel expansive, if I constantly feel worthy, if I constantly feel ready to take intentional action in my life, the universe is just like these proud parents up there, like clapping, like, we're so happy to see you happy. That's all we wanted is for you to be happy. And so now it's like, here's a job that you're going to love. And here's a friend group that you're going to love. And here's a community that you're going to align with. And here's the teacher that's going to help you to get to that next space. And so now all of a sudden, we're just like this free flowing system that's like, I ask and I receive, I ask and I receive, and I put in the work and I receive. Um, and so that's where like the algorithm and the law of attraction really comes into play. And it all comes back down to this embodiment aspect. And so you can sit there and say, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. And your body's going to be like, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> and so like the idea of mantras doesn't always work because even though we're saying it, that's a very intellectual process. But what does being a millionaire actually do for us? Well, all of a sudden it's like, my time is my time. I get to choose what I do with it. I get to travel. I get to eat the food that I want to eat. I get to do the things that I want to do. And so now instead of saying I'm a millionaire, you're going to start saying I'm expansive. I like having freedom. I like having my time. I like being in control of my days. And then all of a sudden, you're not focused on being a millionaire, but you're creating a world that's going to, that being a millionaire is just going to be a part of it because we want to feel all of these things that make us feel good. Very, very powerful. That, 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 I, I like, you know, I, I like that, that that example was, it, it really hit, hit, hit a nod with me. I feel expansive uh, as this conversation, uh, or I'm expanding as this conversation is unfolding. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thanks to all of our viewers. Uh, I wanna give a few shout outs and then we would uh, have one or two questions and then we'll get to a wrap up. But uh, we have uh, Larissa McNeil, Titus, Cheps, Keenan, Tayana, um, Helmin, um, and all of the other viewers that have come on and left comments that I, I didn't see uh, while you were on. Thank you all for joining. This is a fascinating conversation. And um, Lindsay came, you know, with all the fire because uh, she's really breaking it down and deconstructing all of this thing for us. So, um, Lindsay, so put it, put it uh, all in one piece. It's about a holistic wellness. Um, that's that's rounded. Yeah. Now we have a pandemic that's upon us. There's a lot of it's 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 definitely taking a lot of focus from a lot of people. Um, you know, because everybody's sort of you, you can't seem to get away from it. You know, every turn, you know, you're faced with the realities of the pandemic. How can people bring in some of this uh, intuitive guidance, uh, intuition? to sort of deal with uh, some of the challenges uh, on our wellness and well-being that this pandemic is causing? Mm -hmm. So number one is like, let's just start by boosting our immunity naturally. And the best way that we can boost our immunity naturally is to get ourselves, our beings, mind, body, and soul to a place where disease and dysfunction just don't align with our systems. It just doesn't mesh in there. Um, like we said before, if there's like a frequency that's up here and disease is down here, well, if we're up here all the time, that's a big jump. Like it can't, it can't get there. And so during this pandemic, spend time being intentional with yourself. We are the minute that we turn on our TVs, the minute that we read the news, the radio, everything is stop the spike and the next wave is coming and we're on lockdowns. And so if you can even space out, like from the minute that you wake up first thing in the morning, heart say yes, heart say no. 
get yourself into a place where you are from the minute you wake up attuning to your being. That's first and foremost. Second is create a toolbox for yourself that when you do feel yourself shift into um, that lethargic state where it's like self-depriving, um, not feeling motivated, feeling really overwhelmed or just like heavy from the world that we're living in, have a toolbox of things that you can tap into. So like your favorite song, your favorite food, your favorite memory, those three things are like game changers. If you are in a bad mood, throw on your favorite song and sing and dance to it. Get yourself moving, get yourself feeling just a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> if it's your favorite food and you're having like a really hard week, like sit there and just like turn everything off and focus on your meal and really enjoy that meal. Like that soul food, you know, <laughs> like really allow it to absorb into your system. And really just creating that toolbox that you know that these are the things that make you feel good. And I suggest writing them down, put them on a bathroom mirror, put them in a journal, put them as a note in your cell phone. Because what happens is we get into these moments where we've like dipped into that low and we're not in a space to be like, oh, what makes me feel good? What makes me feel good? It's easier to just have the list there and be like, oh yeah, let me just do one of these things. And even if it makes you feel like this much better, Focus on that it made you feel this much better, not that it like that you still feel low or that you still feel lethargic. It's really about changing the narrative of what we are experiencing. Um, I think those would be the best things. I do have a wholeness guide that I will share with you um, and we can put it in the link or something. It's just a PDF document that's like activities for the mind, activities for the body and activities for the soul. I think there's probably like, 10 or 15 for each. And so it's a really good guide to just like tap into and be like, oh yeah, this, this is good for me. And it could be something as simple as like wearing a different color of shirt or having plants around your house. Um, those types of things, like really feeling the sun, um, just things that are going to make you feel better. And knowing that each little step that you take has a really, really big impact when it comes to like the world of the energy. Um, you know, like small intentional steps are really like leaps and bounds in the quantum world. Mm, mm. Thank you so much for sharing. And mm. uh, even more appreciative that you're going to share some of that uh, resource, uh, which would go on, uh, as, as you said, we would add that to our YouTube uh, link so that uh, viewers can access that uh, resource as well. Thank you so much. Mm. And uh, again, we're also going to put in the uh, ways in which uh, our viewers can reach out to Lindsay uh, if you wanted to learn more. I mean, she's pretty much in this hour and a half summarized, you know, um, you know, a vast amount of information in a very, very tidbit size so that we can at least be introduced to it. But uh, if you want to know more, there is a lot more uh, that uh, Lindsay can teach us and also that can guide us to, uh, if you so choose, uh, to follow this path, uh, but it has been very, very great and uh, inspiring. And again, I have expanded uh, just listening to this and 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 training my mind to be present. Uh, you know, as we as we shared and had this conversation, Kaya, I don't know if you have something to add. Well, I just want to say thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, it's been really nice listening to you. It's been really thought provoking. Um, yeah, it's been really, really very good. Um, yeah, thank you. And, thank and you to guys. our viewers, if you have any question, uh, put it in there. I'm going to ask Lindsay one, one I'm going to uh, uh, have a little play. Uh, but, but if you have any questions in the meantime, uh, put it in the comment section so we can ask uh, Lindsay. Uh, and uh, if we don't have any questions, uh, I'm hoping that we're going to wrap up here at the top of, uh, I mean, at the, uh, it's about 522. So uh, we'll give it some time just so people that have questions can send them in. Uh, but in the meantime, okay, Lindsay, let's go. We're going to, uh, and Kaya, because you're on here now, I think I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to throw this, uh, I'm, I'm going to go with both of you, but we're going to do a little bit of play, okay? So, um, 
All right, Lindsay, what, what, what career would you have gotten into if you were not a project manager and you were not a medical intuitive? Ooh, um, I don't have the dedication for the schooling for it, but I think I would be like a quantum physicist or a metaphysicist. <laughs> Wow, that, that you, you know that's dealing with a lot of energies, which is very close to a medical intuitive. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> hey, what about you? Um, well, I'm going to art school next year, so you know I haven't really fully thought about like what I what I want to do for a career. But uh, the things that look the most interesting to me, I would love to be a tattoo artist, and I would Ooh. love to be a doula. Um, so those are kind of you know. Wow. Uh, I know. love those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I know there's a need for doulas down in Cape Breton. <laughs> Just putting it up. <laughs> okay. Um, if you were to channel, and I'm, I'm, I'm reframing this question because we normally ask it in one way, but I kind of thought about it after that session with you. And I thought, you know what? I feel like this question could be asked in another format. So if you were channeling your animal spirit, what, what animal would you channel? Mm, I don't know. Kaya? That's a really hard question. <laughs> that is a hard question. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I feel like I, I love all animals. So I don't really have like one in particular that I feel like I identify with the most. I think I would be a fish of some sort. I really love the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, a fish is, is is pretty good because of Dory. You know, I I, I enjoy watching Dory. <laughs> <laughs> what would your animal be? Uh, I feel like it would be a bear or something like that. Okay. Yeah, just and not because of the aggressiveness side of it. Just, just, just the. Uh, I, I feel like just the. No, let me say teddy bear, something like that. You know, a just teddy the bear. Warmth, <laughs> the warmth. You know? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, um, I I am looking at the comments. I I don't see any questions. Uh, so I, I believe that uh, I would just uh, give Lindsay a chance to give us one final word. Um, and then uh, we will we will wrap up for the evening. Lindsay, back to you. Um, so I guess my like word would be just to go out and be intentional with yourselves. Be intentional with what you're doing. Become an observer. Like take a point of observation every single day, and just like, what are my values? Did I work? or did I do my best at aligning with my values today? Do I feel like I showed up as my most authentic self today? I think those are really like powerful questions to ask yourselves each and every day. Um, and then like every so often do a check-in with yourself and like, what do I want to learn about? What am I passionate about? Um, what difference can I make? How can I be of service to my community? Um, those types of things. And really just working on that self-development um, and then there's another quote that came, has been kind of my motto for the last month or so. And that is surrender to whatever outcome comes with breaking the pattern of rejecting yourself. Hmm. And so to break this down, it is just surrendering to whatever happens when you choose yourself first and foremost. And that might mean that things are going to shift. You might not be friends with people anymore. You might not be in relationship with people. You might not have the same job, but just surrendering to whatever outcome comes with you stepping into your complete authenticity um, and really honoring yourself in that space. And I think if people can try and have that be their aim each and every single day is to be their most authentic, vibrant selves. Um, I think you would like really be amazed at how fast life can transform for you. Well, that was an excellent uh, way to round it up. And thank you so much, Lindsay. We will love to have you back on the show um, for talking about this or for any other discussions that we have that touch on this topic. So uh, look forward to uh, receiving further invites uh, yeah. to come on the show. 
Thank you, Kaya, for joining us this evening um, and uh, bringing us some community vibes. Uh, uh, we look forward to our show next week, and uh, we're going to be bringing you some interesting uh, conversations, just like we do here on Unfiltered. And like we've said, uh, our show, we're looking to, um, you know, transforming our show and uh, having more, um, you know, more guest host and having more conversations and expand uh, the range of the things we talk about. And we just want to make this a space where people can come, have conversations, feel free to channel their selves uh, and, and, and be present in that space without fear uh, that they're going to be criticized, rejected. You know, we disagree respectfully, we debate respectfully, and, you know, we leave the show all feeling expanded. So uh, I think that's my term for today, expanded. I love it. Thank you so much to all of Thank our you. viewers. Thank you to our guests. Uh, have a great, great rest of your week and evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Unfiltered. I'm your host. I'm your host here, Chaps McFarlane. Welcome to Unfiltered.